the scientists have been discovering from studying DNA, right? And today we have more and more advanced that there is a God, that God, there is a God who created the universe. So last week we talked a little bit, introduced about DNA and the creation, where DNA, if you all can still remember, <laughs> right, are letters, alphabets, right? And how God created this universe through Hebrew alphabets. Yeah, so it was not just something happened and there is this light and there is this world. God spoke Hebrew alphabets, all right? Hebrew language. And there is power, there is energy. And those of you who, who uh, will continue in the studies of the Hebrew letters on Saturday, if you miss, you have the recorded one, don't miss it, all right? Because it will help us to have a wonderful revelation of our God. And no more we will see God so small. All right? It's like, well, we only go to the church, then we see God there. <laughs> okay? But God is living inside the creator of this universe, inside everyone. So today we will move, we will uh, go into, so last week we talked about DNA as God, the creation is from God. All right? The creator from the Hebrew alphabets. Today we'll go a little bit more into you, okay, personally, each one of us, the new creation, how we have the DNA of Jesus Christ, okay, and a little bit recap of what is DNA, because most of us are not science <laughs> students, but we'll make, uh, make it easiest for us to understand, all right, okay, so <clears throat> DNA, the molecule of life, consists of all these trillions of cells is an acronym for deoxyribonucleic acid and this material is found in every cell in the human body so in the human body we have dna in the cells there are trillions of cells each cell have how many chromosomes and how many meters of dna right they're actually very very long can go to the moon and back many times. Okay, these are all science facts. All right. So for us laymen, laymen means uh, ordinary people. We just need to understand this. All right, that it is what determines the physical qualities of a person. You understand? So if it's the all the cells inside the uh, whatever by DNA will determine your physical quality. Okay, now we're going to relate that to your spirit man as we go along. Okay, because we are spirit, soul, and body. All right, so this part is about your body. So hair and color, height, bone density, and thousands of other factors. So depending on what the DNA and the cells in your body, which follow your ancestors, your you know, uh, father, mother, all that. So if your father is tall, then you will be tall. Your father got black hair, you will be born with black hair. You understand? So DNA is all these cells inside that will determine your physical quality. So we have a spirit man. All right? I put it earlier so that you can understand because this is not a science lesson. <laughs> right? It's a spiritual to understand we are spirit being. Okay? But we need to understand from here and bring you to the DNA in Christ. Jesus. Otherwise, we will see, oh, you're born again already. Yeah. I look like this. After born again, the new creation also look like this. <laughs> we only see the physical. Okay? But what we have is the spiritual part that causes you to be different from another person in the world. Right? Why you are Christian, you belong to God. What is the difference between a believer, between roof go? <laughs> and your colleague who is not a believer. Is there a difference? Okay? Alright. So, in the, there is a difference in the physical due to DNA. Okay? So, we are short or tall, white or black, depending on the DNA. Correct? Now, what hair, color, and height, bone, all this. So, essentially, it's the blueprint for the human body. Correct? So, your DNA determines all this external of a physical body. Now, the DNA in Christ will determine your spirit man. Okay? And what your spirit man, how what your spirit man can do. Is your spirit man tall? 
short, <laughs> all right, weak, white, blue, depends on the DNA that you were born again with of your spirit man, same as the physical part. You understand the connection now? Clearer? All right. Okay, so it's the blueprint. So your DNA in Christ is the blueprint for your walk on this planet Earth. Right? If we don't understand what is our spiritual DNA in Christ, then we will just walk as a normal human being. Okay? So just as every single person is unique, so to it, so is every person's DNA completely unique. All right, but it follow your parents. That's why you see shows how they uh, test whether <laughs> the one is your father or not. <laughs> okay, this means that if a sample of a person's DNA is taken, that it can be compared to other DNA for purpose of identification. Then you, you all see movies, right? <laughs> Detective shows. You like? <laughs> I like. <laughs> this is used at crime scenes as well as in paternity testing. Uh, so I'll, after this, I can go for paternity test, check whether that's your father or not. <laughs> okay, so this is how powerful DNA is. All right? So you cannot bluff. All right? Oh, this is my son or I, this is my father. No, test DNA. Because inside the DNA, all right, will have the same qualities, the same blueprint. All those things, right? There will be resemblance, okay? That you are the son of this guy, all right? Of this man. So, this is very, very important. Okay, so how do we know now? So, DNA, a little bit of the natural, then we can go into the spiritual. DNA can be found in any part of the body from hair to saliva. <laughs> so, we learn it from the movies, right? <laughs> Go and steal the toothbrush <laughs> or go and steal the hair and then go and test. Okay, interesting, huh? Korean drama, is it? <laughs> okay, but it proves something very interesting about DNA, right? So, mostly, actually, it's from every part of the body, from hair to saliva. Blood samples are often taken because blood contains a large amount of DNA. So, the movies cannot take the blood, <laughs> so they steal one hair. <laughs> All right, but the more. DNA, most DNA is found in the blood. Additionally, since blood comes from the interior of the body, it will have fewer factors to interfere with the harvested DNA. So today what we have is a blood transplant in the spirit, right? Because we have whose blood? Jesus' blood, right? Jesus' blood. That's why we have Jesus' DNA. It is the blood that wash away our sins. It is his blood that makes us righteous. Righteous blood. So if your 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 physical uh, blood blood what do you call it uh, is O or A or B, your spiritual blood is ah J ah <laughs> J also can okay uh, R also can all right Jesus righteous blood all right. So now we need to understand that because the DNA is going to determine how we live our life, how we look like, all right, how we behave in this life. So same. Our spiritual DNA in Christ, if we know it and understand it, is going to determine your, your new walk of life, the newness of life that you're going to walk in. When Jesus said, whoever believes in me is a new creation, right? Born again. So how we see same one, <laughs> same face, same look, okay? In the physical, it's the same. But in the spiritual, you have already got a doorway to enter into different how because your DNA, spiritual DNA has changed. Formerly, our spiritual DNA was Satan's DNA. <laughs> okay, evil spirit DNA. Mm, because there was sin inside. That's why born every child automatically know how to tell lies. Right? The seed of the devil of Adam was inside. You don't need to. Anyone taught your children how to tell lies one or not? <laughs> every mother, father. Did you teach your children they're born? Okay, now I teach you. <laughs> how to lie, okay? They don't say like this, say like this. Nobody taught. But your child, your baby grow up, they know how to tell lies. They know how to show tantrum. They know how to rebel. All are like sin, all right? The evidence of sin. So that is definitely spirit man. We had the DNA of devil, okay? Which is the father of Adam, when Adam disobeyed God. But today, through Jesus Christ, we have a new DNA, all right? And that is the new seed that we're going to talk about. Because we don't understand this, 
we will think Christianity is about trying to be good. That's religion. Right? Don't do bad, do good. You got it all wrong. Okay? Christianity is all about a new birth. New baby, got new DNA, right? Come from the parents. So when we are born again, it's, there's a DNA inside. All right, the whole blueprint for our spiritual life is now within our spirit man. So I just now your announcement, right? Saturday is where we learn even more in depth into our spiritual inheritance, who we are through the Hebrew letters and who God is. So blood is very important. It has the most DNA inside. And we have got a blood transfusion through Jesus Christ, all right, when we receive him. So we got new blood running inside our veins in your body elisha all right in the spirit it's the blood that is pure that is righteous that has no sickness <laughs> no virus no malfunction but how to let this manifest out okay if we, we need to first understand that is who we are right not what the thoughts tell you the world tell you or you know the devil tell you you nobody are you know, god don't love you i look at all this okay but who you really are and what happened to you, all right? That's where we are going to go in through understanding Hebrew letters and Hebrew words. So once the blood sample is taken, DNA chains are examined by experts. If a certain condition is being tested for, then sections of the DNA chain will be scrutinized for markers or for the, of the condition or defect. Actually, there are some pictures. Uh, DNA can be broken off. Right? That's where sickness and disease all come in. If the test is forensic, then the DNA sample taken from the blood will be compared to another DNA sample from a victim <laughs> or from a crime scene to see whether or not the person sampled can be placed at the scene of the crime. So, no need to explain this, right? You all watch a lot of movies, you are forensic shows. Yeah, you understand that. Okay, so DNA, this is from last week, but again, need to revise, right? Because normally we forget everything already, right? <laughs> so DNA are like letters. This is all from scientists, okay? So no, I didn't cook it up. Right. DNA are like letters. DNA is the language of human genetics from your hereditary, all right? Using the letters, amino acids, A, G, T, C. So from the scientists, for us to understand, <laughs> because we are not scientists, it's, it's just simplified. They are just like letters. All right? And think of the basis of DNA like letters. Letters form words, and then words form sentences. So there are endless combinations. Okay? So actually, it means all these uh, chromosomes and all that. But these are the letters which form words, okay? which type of uh, 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 what do you call this? Uh, genetic or cells, then they have a name which we don't need to learn, all right, as laymen. But these words, they, the, these letters form words, and these words form what you become tall, short, you know, hairy, no hair, whatever, okay? All these come from our DNA, all right? So it is from letters, words, words. Okay. Colossians 1.15 God's signature in every cell of the human body. Now, we're going to move a little bit into the spiritual part, connecting from the physical understanding of DNA. DNA, just now you know this word, right? Doxy, all right, nucleic acid, is ATCG, we saw in the previous one, and same like our Hebrew alphabets that we have been studying, for those who have been following, that every single letter has a number, a numerical value right, in the Bible. So in the physical or scientific DNA, they also have numbers, the different acid. <laughs> Correct? Uh, my sister is biochemist. So, if I'm wrong, she'll tell me. <laughs> okay, so, but it should be correct. Uh. Okay, and then these are the numbers 10, 5, 6. Okay, which is also the basic number or 
the matriarch of our God's name. Yud, He, Vav, He, 5, 6, value 5, 10, 26. See how it connects already. He is the image. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. Invisible only to our five senses. But he exists, right? Remember, he is the I am who is I am that I am. The firstborn over all creation, for by him, don't see God so small anymore. Let his word help us to see who God is. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him, all things consist. Okay, so look at our pathetic state, right? Because we didn't understand spirit, soul, and body in the past, you may just receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and that's it. So we continue to live thinking that, wait, lah, wait until I go heaven, maybe I will see God. <laughs> All right? But now on this earth, we have no knowledge of God, very little, because we don't go into His Word. If we really go into his word, not hate knowledge, huh? <laughs> right? But have a revelation of his word. This is actually what he said. How many, how many of you have read this verse before? Colossians 1, 15 to 17. Okay, no need to answer. All right? <laughs> you already look a bit confused. <laughs> okay. But it is when this word reveals to us already, even in the translations, Chinese, English, or whatever, who our God is. Jesus is. All right, the invisible God, the creator. Okay, not someone we put on the shelf and then we worship or in a picture. Okay, but he is the God who holds everything together. All the stars, the moon, and all the planets and everything. And this earth, you know, he is that creator. That's why the scientists studying lately in the year after year 2000, right, have been coming out with articles that say they have it's actually proof of existence of a creator. So, he is before all. Everything was created by him. So, we have what we call hate knowledge. Oh, yes, God created everything. If God created everything, he's very big, right? <laughs> all right, but we don't see it. That's what we call revelation. All right, we have a mental hate knowledge of God. But God is so good to every one of you here. He don't want us to leave us at this mental hate knowledge, but develop our spirit to have that revelation of who he is so that that verse as he is so are we in this world can now become real in each of his children in each of his sons and daughters all right as we begin to have this revelation of who he is and who we are okay so let's look at our spiritual birth today make it very simple first peter 1 20 Three, being born again. So this is your spiritual birth. So all of you, remember spirit, soul, and body. So you have a spirit inside that is eternal, okay, won't die. And then we live in the spirit, live inside a body, ruled by five senses, correct? So this is how this body, every time you look, we determine and make decision. Oh, I'm beautiful. Oh, I'm ugly. Why? <laughs> how we look at ourselves. And the, de the decision of ugly or beautiful also is from the world, right? What they say, high nose is beautiful, a flat nose is ugly. So we make conclusions and decisions all based on what people say. Not on what the Bible said, because we never knew God. We never knew his, what He said. But today we are coming to know Him. And what He said is more important than what the world says. So if the world says, oh, you're ugly, then you turn to the Bible, what did God say? You are? Yes, beautiful, right? Yeah. This is what God said. Okay, why we don't believe it? We're too much <laughs> programmed by the world. All right, the DNA already stuck the other side. Okay, so that's where we come to know now the truth about our spirit man. So we have a soul, which is our, our uh, mind, our will, and emotions. Okay, so everything that is needed for us to live God's life on this earth already given to us in this newborn again spirit man. But 
have to develop and grow. That's why we are doing, right? Spirit man, hidden, developing the hidden man of the heart. Whereas in the world, we always develop body <laughs> or go gym. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, okay? But if you don't develop the real key life thing inside you, right? All this is uh, really only serve a purpose while we are here. Okay, so being born again. Not of corruptible seed. So last yesterday, if you were those in the teaching session yesterday, right? You remember, we are like a new creation, a new product. <laughs> Just came out from where? Your new spirit man came out from where? Hey, <laughs> you're born from where? One, born again from where? Above heaven. Okay. Yes. This automatically should straight away come to you already, right? It sees, it shows that we are so, <laughs> so into this physical world. We can only see our physical birth. We can only see our physical life. But God wants to go beyond and show us that you, Elisha, have been born again. You have a new spirit man. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Okay, what does it mean? That therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. It's like a new product. So you all order online, right? <laughs> okay, and you like to come. Wow, what latest handphone, latest computer, latest whatever, latest invention. And then when it arrives at your home, you open it up and then you just know immediately how to work. Is it? So clever? <laughs> no, right? We have to. It has to come with a manual. Right? Even our DIY man also have to follow manual. Okay, <laughs> if it's a new thing, if it's an old thing, you can do whichever way. It's a new thing. So our spirit man, born again, is a new spirit man, new one. And what more? Not even from this world. How would we know how to operate this new creation? We have to look at the creator, the manual by the creator. And who was the one who created this new spirit man? God. So God tells us how this new spirit man, what he put inside the DNA and how is it going to operate? One of the things is going to operate by faith. <laughs> live by faith, not live by fear. So very different. Okay. So as we read the word and study God's word and have revelation, the revelation means open up understanding, spiritual understanding, then we'll be able to operate this machine properly. <laughs> this new spirit man that will be able to walk in the spirit. Okay, Just now, we have worship in our own language and we have worship in the spirit. All right? Pray in our language and pray in the spirit. Is there a difference? Why in the spirit? Because God is spirit and you are spirit. Ah. I still don't know how to answer that one. <laughs> I always remember that particular class. You know, when the teachers ask him, then she said, I'm spirit. <laughs> See, a little child, 10 years old, knows that she's a spirit being first. Amazing, right? So God will reveal all this. But uh, all those adults still think we are body. <laughs> okay, so that's where God will bring us by the Holy Spirit, all right, to bring us to that revelation that first and foremost, it's a spirit man who got born again. Okay? Now, being born again, not of corruptible seed. So everyone in the physical, where all your DNA come from? From the seed, right? Of the father, mother come together. Then you have a seed that has been germinated and become, that's become you. But with of but that one can, can, can pass away, right? The physical person can only live up to a certain number of years. But now we have incorruptible. The spirit man born again from incorruptible cannot pass away. By how? The word of God. So physical, John 1.12 or so, that you were not born from physical, right? Man and woman coming together, okay? But you are born from God. How? God's word that is living in the YLT version. It says, not of seed that's corruptible, but incorruptible through a word of God. <laughs> you were all born again. We were all born again. The spirit man. All right, this new product was created by what? Yes, 
It is God speaking. What did He speak that you became alive? Okay, not sure. Huh? No, what word did He say? <laughs> oh, that's our Elijah Joker. <laughs> Okay, we will discover as we go along, right? Because how did your new person came, came into being? God spoke a word, right? That is alive and living. So all of us, not, oh, you're not yet very sure what word he speaks. It's not let there be light, okay? <laughs> that one is create the, the light in the world. Okay, but for each person born again, let's see what happened Immediately, you became a new creation. Immediately, your spirit man got born again. Think about it and then let's go on. All right. So, this is God birthed his DNA inside us by a word. By a word. By a word. Remember that? Huh? By a word of God. What is that word of God that is so powerful that can change your whole spirit man dead to become alive let's see huh? so exciting all right first samuel 1 11 in the old testament is when uh, hannah in the bible wanted to have a child and asked the lord this and she vowed a vow and she was barren physically O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget your handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of my uh, life, and there's no reason come. So Hannah in the Bible asked God for a child, and we know, of course, uh, Samuel came out. But look at this word that has been translated child, all right? In the Hebrew, it's actually seed. It means zira, all right? And these are the Hebrew letters. So this child, it give me a seed. That means you're asking God for a seed, right? You need a seed, right, to, have <laughs> to, to be able to form a baby. So, but the seed in the Bible is Hebrew letters of Zayin, Resh, and Ayin. Okay, so all this one we did a bit already in our Saturday sessions. HMD sessions. This one we haven't done yet, and Ayin, but we will go a little bit into it. So just know that in the Hebrew, he's, she is actually saying this, Zira. Okay, give me a Zira. That means give me Zayin, Resh, and Ayin. The power of Zayin, Resh, and Ayin. The power of these three letters will be able to give her the seed to give birth. All right, just like Sarah and Abraham. All right, so here, this is the meaning. So it is the meaning of the Hebrew letters, all right, that actually have the power. Remember, where is the power? Time, matter, energy. Yesterday, we learned about the youth, right? It is inside there, in these Hebrew letters, that gave her the child, the man child that she asked for. Because it has to be a miracle. She cannot give birth naturally. All right, so the DNA of Jesus. So God's name is Jehovah, which is Yud, He, Ba, He. Okay, and uh, Jesus Christ's name is Jehoshua. All right, Yeshua. Which also have this same part, yud he va, but the the other two letters are a bit different. Okay, so this is still he spirit, but here it's different. It is shin and <laughs> ayin. Okay, ayin. So we will do a little bit because more detail we will do in letter by letter. But today, for you to understand the DNA of Jesus Christ inside your spirit man, inside every one of us who are born again. So that means in Jesus' DNA has God's DNA. Same, right? Yud, he, vav. Yud, he, vav. Yeah. So that's why Jesus is also God. Three in one. Okay? 
Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God. So when Jesus came and he said, I am, the Pharisees said, blasphemy. Are you saying that you are God? Which he is saying that he is God. Okay? He is the true God, the Jehovah that they worship. Because of these letters inside him. So remember, DNA are letters. Correct? Inside our body. So this DNA in the spirit, man, are letters. Letters that are God's letters. Okay? That has power, that has energy, that transcends time. All right? And space. So, okay, first, you all understand this one? Okay? Jesus' DNA has God's DNA, which is Yud, Hey, Wow. It's inside. All right? Yud. Anyone remember from yesterday's teaching? What is Yud? Or Yod? Right? It's the hand of God, divine hand. All right? Hand of God. Okay? Remember that? God started everything with this. Okay. Now, Genesis 1.26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You see this word, image, and see the word dominion. Okay, so man was, God wanted to create man first in his image. Now he said, in our image. So God is three. God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So in their image, okay, and what is God's name? In the image, we always think, oh, a picture <laughs> of God, God head, God hands, right? But actually, it's referring to the Hebrew letters. The Hebrew letters are the ones with the power, God's word. Actually, Hebrew letters are God's word. Okay? And I guess someone has put it out nicely. Yud, He, Ba, He. Wow, all very clever idea. <laughs> At least you can recognize our God's name. See? It's like a man. And a fire. All right? Yud. It starts with a youth because it's the divine hand of God. Creation, you need a hand, all right, to do something, all right. Whatever you create, business or whatever items, is your hand. And then you have the letter H. Hey. What's the letter H? Hey? It means spirit. It means wind, all right. It means window as well. Wind and then window. You can see the spiritual realm, all right. And the spirit of God, the wind of God, the fire of God. So everyone has this inside us because God said make in our image and God's name is yud he vav he so if we were made so what happened is God breathed into Adam right his spirit he breathed yud he vav he into Adam so Adam and God created and he, he ruled over the whole universe right so Adam first thing he had was authority he had the same authority like God. He's not God, not God, a little lower than God that we were learning in Psalms, in our devotion. Yeah, but that's what God made him. And that's the spirit of God put inside Adam to be a ruler of this earth. Okay? Not no need to own, just rule can already. It's like everything given to him, he just managed this earth for God. For God to dwell with man. So These letters have a lot of power. Hey, now, this is the DNA of God. Okay? Yud, he, va, he. You understand? DNA, letters. So, in the physical one, we are made of DNA. Or all these letters of the biology and all that. Chromosomes or whatever cell they are called. A, D, G, F. So, spiritual DNA, we have God's DNA. Made of what letters? These are the letters. Yud, he, va, he. So, we have... God's hand, divine power. We have God's spirit, right? And how do we connect to the Vav, Jesus Christ, right? Vav is number of men, plus also represent the nail that Jesus was nailed to the cross so that you and me, our sins were nailed there and now we can have a new spirit, okay? The new spirit to begin our new life. This is the DNA inside you, okay? Look at this. 
This is Yahshua. Just now you saw, right? And this is Yud, He, Shin, Bav, Ayin. These are the letters that form the name of huh? Jesus. Okay? Yahshua is just the Hebrew pronunciation or Hebrew way to call uh, Jesus. Alright? So, remember this, huh? This is the DNA of who? This is the these letters are the DNA of Jesus. Okay, remember this so that at the end you can answer the question. Okay, that you don't know how to answer in the beginning. All right, if you catch this, you will know why how we were all recreated. Okay, Yud, He, Shin, Ba, Ayin. This is Jesus DNA. Okay, now we will go a little bit of each. All right, some we already did. So, today I'll just go briefly. Yod. Yod is the, roughly, all right, one of the meaning, divine hand. All right, hand of God. Okay, not just hand. Huh? It can be your hand or her hand, all right. It's the hand of God. Remember that. Yod speaks of spirituality. Okay, from God. Okay, that means all of us without Yod, <laughs> without God, nothing. All right, so we have to start with God. Yod. All right, as a hand, as a fist, that is a picture symbol. But the full meaning is, is the hand of God, of the Creator, okay? That created us with the head, with the, with the spirit. It represents power and might, okay? The hand of God is powerful. So, if we understand this, we won't be scared of anything in the world anymore. All right, He is more powerful. The hand of God is more powerful than the virus, sickness, disease, and all the things from this world as a result of Adam's sin. Okay, now, if you want more detail, remember, yesterday I had two hours on youth. Try to understand and get the revelation of youth because it's the first letter of the name of Yahweh, our God. Your God, ah? you want to know or not? <laughs> okay, you all want to know, right? That's why you are here. Okay. The next letter is He. Sorry. He. Just give a bit recap. It's the number fifth letter. And actually, the pictorial side is a window. From the word He, behold, it's revealing something. All right? A window that opens to reveal what's inside the house with the sunlight. So, there are a few meanings, right? So, He is also God's breath, right? The wind of God, the fire of God, the spirit of God, as well as a window. Window for what? Huh? Huh? Yeah, to see, right? To see outside, to see the sunlight. So, this is spiritual part. So window, we look out the natural window, we still see the physical, metaphysical world. But when we have God's spirit, the hay inside, the window open to what? Ah, the spiritual realm. Okay? So down we have the hay. With God's spirit, we are made spirit. That's why God's spirit only communicates with spirit. God, God don't communicate with your mind or body, right, Ru? Yeah? He communicate with our spirit because God is a spirit. Now that you can... Uh, you have been born again, have a spirit of God inside you. Now you can see God from your spirit. Okay? All the spiritual realm is actually open. First through this window. Spiritual window. Okay, next one is the letter Shin. Okay, letter Shin is the 21st letter. Later we will go when we reach the 21st letter. It's the letter of fire and transformation. Shin literally means tooth. Okay, look at that. <laughs> okay, all the teeth. And its shape is three branch branches of flame. This is how the letter looked like. These are the three pillars of the tree of life, which Jesus is the tree of life, reaching high like flames, purifying and changing the condition of our lives, teaching us to become aligned with the world whole of creation. Okay, so it has the meaning of teeth, and also sharp, all right, and indicates devouring. You use your teeth to do what? Huh? Huh? 
uh, eat, but some people just swallow, right? <laughs> what you call, you never chew, right? Yeah, you have to destroy the, the big piece of meat before it can swallow inside. You have to cut it down. All right, so shin, destroy, has the meaning also of fire. Fire is destructive, right, Elijah? Okay, can destroy or can also bring good, can do both. Okay, the fire can kill if you go inside a fire, and the fire can be used for heat, energy to keep you warm. So, but, but it can, it's mainly it's destructive. So this shin, all right, is like teeth that can destroy. So what needs to be destroyed? Then you have the letter vowel. The letter valve is the sixth letter of the LF bed having the numeric value of six. The pictograph of valve looks like a 10 pack, whereas the classical Hebrew script is constructed of a vertical line and conjoined yod. The meaning of the word valve is hook, as it's a connecting hook used when the tabernacle was assembled. So from this word valve, we have the hook or the nail and symbolize Jesus Christ nailed on the cross. All right, so you remember, yud he vav he, behold the hand, behold the nail, behold the window, the he, see Jesus Christ nail on the cross for you and for me, for humanity. All right, that is God's name. Okay, so the vav is Jesus dying on the cross, bringing us back to the Father, whoever would behold him and receive him. Okay. Next one, ayin. Okay, I will go a little bit more on this ayin because very, very interesting. <clears throat> the Hebrew letter ayin means I. And correspondingly, the ayin has to do with vision and bringing forth lights that are hidden. So this letter is the last letter of whose name? Yeah. Okay, so ayin, all right, just remember. Is this the, the word means eye, symbolize the eye for what it sees and comprehend. Now, also the word means spring, as in the eye is used to be pure, bring purity, cleansing, and healing to grief. So remember, these letters are talking about the spiritual part. Okay, so this is not physical eye. Now we have God's spirit inside us when we are born again. You have. Your spiritual eye can now be open to see through the window <laughs> into the things of God. Okay? That uh, we don't know before. Have you before we were born again or even after born again, right? Remember lost, found, lost. <laughs> okay. So have you seen the, the, the spiritual realm before? Never. Right? We have all been on this earth. That's why Christians can live sometimes the whole entire life and never see the spiritual realm. Uh, now Ruth can see visions, right? <laughs> so partly is visions are in spiritual realm, dreams also God given, but just by understanding the revelation of the word, that is the spiritual realm because God's word is spirit <laughs> and life. So if you have understand God's word, you are already seeing into the spiritual realm. Ayin teaches us to see beyond and relates to time. It is the aspect of the visionary to see not just what is happening in front of us, but to envision beyond that, to know one's direction five, ten, hundred years ahead and beyond. Do you all know what is your direction? Hundred years, five, ten, hundred years beyond? <laughs> yes. We can now we can see, right? You're no longer afraid of death because we can see that death is just change of address from earth address to heaven address. And beyond that is the forever to be with God, right? Heaven is waiting for us, but there's a job to do <laughs> while we are on this earth. Okay? So now we can see, but last time can see or not. Before knowing Jesus, or even not say just know Jesus, hearing the word of God. Right? Because you can know Jesus and still not sure whether go where. Because if you, no one told you what God's word say, you wouldn't know that there is a heaven there waiting for us. So slowly we begin to see, understand the spiritual realm through the knowledge of God's word. Okay? 
So, ayin, all right, when we have Jesus, suddenly our spiritual eyes are open, just like Christine, all right, received the Lord, now she can, she know that this realm is real, but not know everything yet, all right, a little knowledge of there is God, there is heaven, God is the greater one, she's not scared to tell her colleagues she's a Christian now, okay, so this, her eyes, spiritual eyes have opened, okay, to see beyond, so now you're not scared of death already, right, Christine, ah, because the, her spiritual eyes, one of the DNA inside her new spirit man is the DNA of Jesus that caused her to be able to see. All right, just like Elijah, you no longer see sickness. All right, as you go, learn the word of God, there is a light inside you. Okay, your ever spiritual eye. This is an alphabet, a Hebrew alphabet, part of your DNA. Okay, to cause you to see. Ayin is included in a great number of words associated with time. Okay, you talk to an unbeliever is. You can you realize that hey, they cannot see the future like that, <laughs> right? They see the future as very bleak, you know, charm law, charm law, you know, uh, everything uh, going to lose job or whatever. Any bad news, they say charm law, charm law, dire. They, they cannot see beyond what the physical is, what their boss tell them, what the office, what the news or in Facebook or whatever tells them. That's what they see. But when you are born again, you and you know that you. Uh, go into the word of God with this ayin, this eye, spiritual eye inside you, you can see. See what? You can see your future because what tells you about your future? <laughs> We're all blank. As in, which word of God tells you about your future? Specific word. That specifically say the word your future. Yes, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. What does it say? <laughs> okay, at least you got a bit. <laughs> okay, for I know the plans that I have towards you, thoughts of good and not evil, that you may have a future, a good future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. So if we don't have this word inside us, we're also not very sure your future good or not. Yeah, and then there's, this one is like one clear word. There are many other words also. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So, wow, a beautiful future. But that particular Jer Jeremiah 29, 11 talks about the plans and purposes that God has for you, for each one of us. It's good. He doesn't want any one of us to die from sickness, disease, poverty. Right? But how do we know? Again, if you have God's word, yeah, you meditate a lot, right? <laughs> Still meditating? <laughs> Hopefully, okay? Because that is the power. It's God's word, what God said. That you, if you have it in your heart, you will be able to confidently rest and confidently live yeah? your life, not afraid of the future because God, you have the Almighty Creator already said in His Word that your future will be great. And then in Jesus, with the letter Ayin inside, you can grasp it. But the unbeliever, you give them Jeremiah 29, 11. So what? Uh, it doesn't, it's not in their DNA. Right? So you say, oh, you must have blue eyes because I got blue eyes in the physical. No, that my DNA is not your DNA. You understand? So, if we are born again, we have Christ's DNA, God's DNA, then God's everything in God's word belongs to us. It's part of our DNA, a new, the blueprint for our spiritual life, for this new creation. So, beautiful Ayin can see into the future. That's why we can prophesy. The gifts of the Spirit, all right? God's Spirit. And then we know what is or the whole future also through the Bible. God's word are words of prophecy. All right? Because why? Our God can see ahead. The devil cannot see ahead. 
Where is the proof that the devil cannot see ahead? He just grop, grop, aga, aga one. <laughs> Where is the proof in the Bible that the devil aga, aga? <laughs> that means guess, guess lah. But he cannot know exactly what God planned. Where is the proof? How do we know that? God knows everything ahead, right? We say. But the devil, does he know everything ahead? Oh, oh blank, blank. <laughs> he nailed Jesus, crucified Jesus. If he knew that he, Jesus would rise from the dead, right? He won't crucify him already. <laughs> he killed Moses. Uh, he, he tried to kill all the children. He aga aga. Okay, there's somebody who is going to be deliver the Hebrew children. So he's going to kill all. But of course, God is smarter than him, right? So, and the worst part, the, the Bible say, if the devil knew, I think it's in Corinthians or Romans, if the devil knew that God was going, this is the plan of God that his son is going to come to this earth and die on the cross and be and re, and overcome and uh, and rise from the dead to take as our sin substitute. The Bible says very clearly, Paul writing, he would not have crucified Jesus Christ <laughs> because that very act caused him to be defeated, isn't it? He think, wow, I killed the. Son of God already. He knows Jesus came. He knows Jesus is the Son of God. But he thinks, I kill him then, whatever God has in mind, gone already. But he says, he doesn't, he cannot see the future. Okay? So the Bible says clearly, <laughs> it was to his downfall. So that's why we speak in tongues, right? He cannot understand. <laughs> Alright? So the devil doesn't know your future. But we, in Christ, with a, if we go into the Word, we know our future. And who knows our future even more? God. All right? God. That's why He planned the best for you. It's, your future is good. All right, Elijah, you will not suffer from sickness and disease, but you will still continue to walk on this earth strong and healthy, like Moses and Caleb and Joshua, at preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Mm, that's your future, okay? And the devil cannot destroy it if you know who God is and who you are. Alright? So, Ayin has all this. You see all these words that are translated, hours, time, all start with the letter Ayin. Past, moment, eternity, and vision. So this is just the article, which is quite interesting, easy for us to understand, an example uh, of uh, this, this author who wrote this. My Kabbalah teacher told a story once of his grandfather as a very old man out in the yard of the family house, moving large rocks, clearing the land, creating a garden and planting trees. So my teacher asked, why was my grandfather planting those trees? So it's like, uh, uh, Elijah, go and plant, right? <laughs> okay, people ask you, what are you doing? He was too old and they would not mature in time to feed him. Meaning that you plant those trees, he's an old man, then definitely it won't grow in his lifetime. It was because he was planting them for the next generation ahead, beyond himself, and that is vision. Okay, so the world understands a little bit of this, from this example. But what we have, the ayin, is we can see far, far ahead, provided you see the word. <laughs> because it's the word that tells you what your life is going to be like. It's the word that tells you you'll be healthy, you'll be strong, you are blessed, you will be rich, you will not lack. Right? If you don't have the word, ah, then we are quite blind. All right? So this is vision and this is in the letter Ayin. Okay, so if the, everybody has this letter inside the potential now to read God's word and to see beyond. So we may not see, oh, what is happening now? In the situation, it may look bad or, you know, some trials or testing that you're going through. But if you have God inside you, Ayin, and basically means God's word, 
the revelation to see and understand God's word, you will know, ah yeah, it will work out for good. Lah. So you don't have to worry, you don't have to stress, you don't have to right, lose any ounce of sleep. Because ayin is inside you, you can see, provided there's a substance there for you to see. The word of God. The word of God said he has already healed you. Alright? Not he will heal you. Already healed you. Alright? Okay. So it teaches us, Ayin teaches us to understand the cause and effect in our lives. How past actions lead to future out outcomes and how to think for the future. So believers are meant to have vision. Right? That's why the Bible says without a vision, my people perish. But he's not trying, you know, we are not trying to force ourselves to see vision or to uh, see the future. It is already inherent inside us. This letter Ayin is in Jesus' name, the DNA. So if his DNA, which in, if includes this letter Ayin, that means we also able to see, provided we are seeing the correct thing, seeing from the word, ah, if you see from the world, you will see nothing. Okay, So that, then we can not be afraid because no matter what happens, he will work it for our good. Romans 8.28. All right? And there's so many other scriptures. The more word you have, the more further you can see. <laughs> right? It's like the more letters form a line of DNA that can move you ahead. If you have very little word, you only got one word. <laughs> and the one word you also don't believe. Right? Then how? All right? Cannot walk this spiritual life. All right? Okay. Ayin implores us to open our eyes. So remember, this is not physical eyes. Huh? Physical eyes, we all know how to open. <laughs> okay. Spiritual eyes. So to see beyond the physical. The ayin is meant to take us from dark to light. So we were all, that's why the Bible says there's a kingdom of darkness and a kingdom of light. Then we look around, all oh, got light, what? <laughs> Where's the darkness? See, it is not the physical realm. It is the spiritual realm. Yeah? There are only two realms on this earth. All right? Kingdom of darkness and kingdom of light. But if we are very physical, we will say, actually, this verse don't make sense. All right? Because to the unbeliever, they say, who said I'm in the dark? <laughs> right? They cannot see. Why? Because I got light. I walk in the sun, I got light. I switch on the light, I got light. Why you say I, I'm in the dark? Eh? You in the light? Eh? <laughs> right? It's not what we say, right? It's a spiritual realm where God described, right? The eyes closed. The spiritual eyes are in darkness. They don't understand. They cannot see that Jesus already healed you. Right? You say, where? Uh, no chance, doctor, no chance, declare me healed. I still no chance, see the pain go off. Physical realm. So, the ayin, okay, the eye, spiritual eye, help us to see beyond the physical. People say, you sick ah? You say, hello. <laughs> hello. You know, I was healed 2,000 years ago. Alright, because God's word says so, and the ayin inside you, the power of that God DNA inside you caused you to say, I was healed already. See? It urges, it urges us to break through the walls of limitations in order to see what is not yet visible to us. Not yet visible. Maybe the, the thing not yet manifests or your finances not yet manifest, then we keep sewing. Okay? And the healing not yet manifest, we keep meditating until we know that, ah, you are already, you were healed already, past tense. Yesterday, I had a, a talk with my uh, a WhatsApp conversation with my sister, and she asked me, right, why some people get healed instantly, and why some people not yet healed? Is it that they have to wait? <laughs> Patience? Then I just put there. What does God's word say, right? Did God say, be patient and you will be healed. <laughs> what did he say? We were healed. Actually, it's past tense. So he didn't say, be patient and you will be healed. He said, 
by his stripes you were healed. So why not healed? Eh? We not yet get the revelation. <laughs> We're still stuck with the not yet see, not yet healed. But God's word say opposite. That's why it says, Ayin, when you have revelation, you will see. Okay, what's that? Eh? Beyond the limitation. Okay, the limitation of the physical realm is what, what the doctors say, what my body say, what my mind say, what my friends say. All from conclusions from the physical realm. No more. All these limitations will be taken off when you receive revelation of the ayin. That means not yet visible, but it will then be manifested when we have the revelation. One day you wake up, all right, Elisha, and you say, hey, yeah, I was healed already. Lah. <laughs> That's it. Final. Don't look at your body. Don't look at anything in the physical world anymore. Just believe what God say. Speak. When you believe, you will act differently. You will do things differently. And then the manifestation will take place. Okay? So just very close, right? We think, be patient, and you will be healed. But it's not inside God's word. <laughs> okay? So be very clear. All right? When it's, it's God's word or it's not God's word. All right? That's why Eve was deceived, right? She's not very sure. Eve in the Bible, not this Evelyn, okay? <laughs> right? When the devil talked to her, she's not sure. So you will be like God. She actually already made in the image of God. But she's not sure. So we need to be sure what God say through His Word. Okay. Just to uh, put, put another picture for us to see Ayin again. Ayin can relate to the van vanities of the world, which mostly constitute a tower of cards for the temporary life. But at the same time, it has in it the potential for seeing reality as it is, and higher level, even the template for unseen reality. Ayin can see the past from the present, and at times, even the future. <clears throat> so when you have this, right, reality, remember I told you what's the meaning of real, uh, the word reality in the Bible, is the word uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? That is, I am the reality. I am the truth. The truth is the reality. All right? What we see here is not real. In a moment, it can change. If you believe. Right? So someone can be uh, lame, cannot walk. Right? When that person believes in Jesus, instantly can be healed, can walk. That is the reality. The reality is what Jesus said. I've already healed you. Okay? I've already made you rich. You're no more poor. That is the reality. But the, the one that we see as a fact is based on the five senses, the physical world. That's where we need to move to get the revelation. Very simple. Ephesians. So this is the meaning of ayin. All right? Where? Paul's prayer for the church. He didn't pray you know, be healed or whatever. The writings from Paul to the church is because everyone have the potential to live in the new life, the spiritual life. But the problem is the ayin. <laughs> okay, cannot see properly. All right, so Paul prays for the church, what? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation Ah, this word, revelation, open, open, revelation, reveal what is, being, what is concealed, what is we are so blind to, all right, in the natural, in the knowledge of who? Of Him, to know Him is to have revelation, all right, and the eyes, ayin, of your understanding being enlightened, okay? So, we can be born again, but the ayin, close, <laughs> cannot see, spiritual, Okay, when we have understanding, God prays, Paul prays for the church, the believers, that all our eyes, our spirit eyes, that's why we need first understand we have a spirit man. Right? If a person doesn't even understand they got spirit man, it's where, where, where got eyes there? <laughs> right? But most of you have already come to uh, know the very basic a little bit. All right, at least you are spirit, soul, and body. So if you are a spirit, spirit got eyes. Also, the five senses of the spirit can taste, can hear, can see, but spiritual realm. All right, so the 
The eyes of our understanding is not the physical head knowledge understanding. It's a spiritual understanding that you catch it. Yes, I'm healed. I was healed. Oh, that time, everybody will just stand up. <laughs> because this is the revelation that needs to come to our spiritual eyes. Okay? That you may know what's the hope of a calling. If you still blur, blur. Oh, you think, okay, my life is just this earth and this is my job and that's it. No, there is a spiritual calling and a purpose in each person's life. In what life? New life. All right, the new creation life. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance? All right, most Christians will say, I don't have anything. I don't have uh, 100,000 or whatever thousand. I don't have inheritance. <laughs> okay, so God is talking about what? Spiritual inheritance. Okay, when only our eyes open, then only we can see what is our spiritual inheritance one of it is your health your healing belongs to you now through christ what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us all this to know all this is to have the ayin open the spiritual eyes open then that part we can pray all right pray every day lord open my ayin open my spiritual eyes but you need to look at the word Okay, don't say open my spiritual eyes and then look in front. <laughs> look at the table, the chair. Okay, all right. So look at the word. According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Do we see Christ seated at the right hand of the Father? Especially when you're in problem. <laughs> we see we are down on this earth. It's probably in hell. So many people say, I, uh, I'm going to hell. Uh, you know, this is like hell on earth. Uh. <laughs> we, we haven't our ayin cannot see anything we only see the problem right but when we see god's word properly when we have our spiritual eyes open we see christ seated at the right hand of the father and we see our ah, roof god seated there also <laughs> all right we see evelyn seated there we see ah, benny seated there you understand yeah but all the time the devil make us see the just the normal world the problems of this world Right? No money, no, no time, no all the things from this world. But if you see God as who He is, you will have dominion. You will rule over all these fears. Okay? And have the victory. <clears throat> In the heavenly realm. Alright, you see the heavenly realm. How many people can see the heavenly realm? You can see. Your eye in open already. Okay? Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. What name? Cancer is a name. <laughs> Sickness got names, right? Goiter, whatever, is a name. Poverty has a name. Okay? So all this fear, everything has a name. Don't think of just your names. All right? Every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. In heaven, there is no sickness. There is no poverty. Can we see beyond this physical world? Right? These Hebrew letters, DNA, are to open our eyes and realize that, yes, there is a spiritual world. I'm going to stop living like, as if this is, this is it. <laughs> this world, that's it. No. All right? Beyond, remember, he put all things under his feet. When there's a problem or bad news or what, realize, meditate on God's word. Let God's word open your eyes to see that Jesus is in charge of that situation. And he can turn it around if we know how to speak. If we know of a spirit man, eyes all open, ears all open. <laughs> Most of the time, spirit man sleeping. Huh? <laughs> so, spirit man need to awake okay and feed properly and grow properly then you can have good vision <laughs> if not the vision blah blah one so we have to have good vision feed your eyes properly with god's word and then you will see jesus as the one who is ruling over the situation whether it's our family it's our body ourself our home or around the world then you can see that God has put all things under his feet. So you see a devil is also not scared really. That's one of the revelations, right? You saw you're no more scared of the demon because your spiritual eyes open by his word. When you do meditation and confession, finally it caught you. Jesus is in charge. He already defeated the devil. 
say this doesn't happen automatic <laughs> okay because remember the spiritual realm we were all not used to it at all okay so only god's manual tell us about this spiritual realm that you have already been born again with the seed or dna and who is the head is your boss the head is your money the head is the sickness the head that means the one in charge who is the head jesus okay and then when we see that our whole action our whole life everything will change in different different areas you won't be afraid all, right, all things and then he gave it all things to the church the church is the new creation who are you and then you are supposed to rule <laughs> rule and reign in life right that means you know how can we rule except we know what is the kingdom rule okay we rule from above okay which is his fullness of him who dwells who fills all in all okay just uh two to help us to understand a bit of uh, ayin in the garden of eden okay it starts with a letter ayin eden is paradise right the door we see the door of life god put adam and eve ah, evelyn was there <laughs> not the fallen evelyn the new one new creation evelyn and god today put us back into the garden of eden the spiritual realm okay where we can taste where we can see the door of life we saw the light we enter in okay to the new life the ayin is made of ayin dalet and uh, nun okay which is the judge eden is the location of the eternal judge we are in the spiritual realm life of pleasure not pressure where god is in charge all right ayin eden means pleasure and through christ we have been brought back into the garden of eden spiritual realm that's where when we have the because everything comes from the spirit and then from the spirit we will change the situation of the natural if it need to be changed of the physical and then this is the place of happiness okay in christ the spirit man can be rejoicing if you are seeing properly <laughs> while everybody may be crying all right why because we have always the good news of what God say about any situation. Now this type, very interesting because God is interested in prospering us in finances. Who is not interested about money? <laughs> As I said before, why the church not teaching about money and the Christians, God's children, had to go out in the world to learn how to invest, how to make more money or how to have enough money to survive when all is inside our manual which is god's word right and you are god's children you have god's dna and this important thing of life is your money jesus came the first thing in matthew uh, 6 what do you say don't worry about clothes la, you know all these are material things why did he tell that because he and he says these are the things who worry about the non-believers worry about so if we worry about it's like we are also non-believers <laughs> oh, money clothes and all that then remember what jesus said these are the things that the non-believer think about pay bill pay this pay that money money are we non-believers that means they're saying that they don't have a father okay a spiritual a heavenly father but you now you you my children you have a father a father who will heavenly father who will take care of you so we don't need to worry about all these things and in god's manual he teach us how all right to come into the blessings where you don't even need to think about the next pay or whatever okay so there is a system in this world and there's a system in heaven and that is because this world at the moment is have been under devil satan okay so everything was corrupt corrupted right and the, the world was cursed okay because of sin so money comes from where this world made from this world is under a curse that's why yesterday there was one verse that says the tenth part the tithe 
have to be it's set apart. It belongs to God. Why? This part is holy. The rest is this world. But when we put this one ten and give it back to God, then He sanctifies the whole. That means the rest of your 90% becomes holy, will not be subject to the corruption and the curse of the world as a result of sin, of Adam's sin. Now look at the letters, okay, of this in this word type. So God instituted and taught Abra uh, Adam, probably taught to uh, his children and so forth, because they actually typed before in the law of Moses, right? Abraham already died. So this, hey, sorry. How to go backwards, eh? Ah, uh, okay. In this letter type, it has these four alphabets. Now remember, as we are learning Hebrew alphabets, there's power in that alf in that word, right? In that letter, supernatural power. So what's in this letter type? First of all, type is the number ten. Yud. Yesterday we learned. So what is number ten? And yud, God's hand. That means the divine hand is upon your tight, upon your financial financial part of your life when we do, when we tight. All right? So we want God's hand to be in our finances or not? <laughs> of course, because He's the one who can prosper us. So first, there's a letter, Mem. So first, when we tight, we are saying, God, I want you to be in my finances. I want you, I want divine intervention into my finances. Okay, then second, look at the letters. Mem. Mem means waters and nations. It speaks of abundance. That's so why I will open up uh, the water, the, the windows of heaven to pour out blessing. It's talking about abundance, nations. When you see this letter, we will go deeper into it later. But it means waters, blessing. Right? The water pouring out, blessings. And then it has the letter ayin inside. We just learned a little bit only, okay? About the eye. So when we type, we suddenly we open our eyes, spiritual eyes already. We can see God in our financial situation, in our office, in our work of our hands. Everything we see God now. <laughs> Last time we see what? <laughs> Ayo, charm law. The boss said want to, you know, uh, sack or whatever. But now we can see God because when inside the tide open, it's spiritual. Number 10, you. Okay? In the tide, when we do our tithing, we are saying, God, you, are you involved in my financial life? Because our life got different, different aspects. And now inside there, inside the tide, we op our, our eyes are spiritually open. You no longer fear. People say, you can or not. After you tie already, you can pay all your bills. Ah. Or not even people say. Sometimes you say to yourself. <laughs> okay? But now you have the eye in. Right? The eye inside. Spiritual eye. Why I cannot? Because God will bless me. God will take care of whatever finances. And you will see the manifestation. Many people have already experienced it. But first, this, this part, all right? And then it has the shin. Shin, remember? Consume and destroy the thief. Just now, I think uh, Cheng Lan brought out the verse, right? When we tithe in Malachi, God will destroy the devourer, right? Which is, ayah, suddenly the business no more already, the salary no more already, or whatever. The destroyer, what you plan never grow, but never succeed. No. God will see to it because there's a shin inside this type that destroy the devourer. The devil cannot take your finances. He cannot rob you. He cannot, you know, kill you because you have the shin inside. The power of the shin to destroy the devil's work in your finances. And lastly, there's another letter inside there which is the letter Resh which means the first or highest person, the man's head, which is Jesus Christ. That's why we tithe in Hebrews. Here we tithe mortal men, receive the tithes or in the church. And then up there, who receive your tithes? Jesus Christ. Resh, the highest person. When we tithe, we are acknowledging Jesus as the highest person in my life, including in my finances. He is highest, not money is highest. 
Not boss is highest, right? Jesus is highest, that's why I type. See how beautiful and powerful is in this letter type? Plus, starting the type mean number 10 is the youth. You understand? So powerful. Why now you understand the nation of Israel? Why so rich? <laughs> they have this covenant. Ah, another thing this morning, the Holy Spirit told me, this tithing is a covenant. Covenant relationship. Covenant, most of us don't understand. But the Jews understand covenant, right? Because God chose them based on covenant, right? God made the many, many covenants. God made covenant, maybe it's promise. Promise with them that I will do this for you, all right? I will bless you and make you a great nation. And if the, the whole descendants were blessed because of God's promise or covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So David, all right, when he fought against Goliath, he quoted, he, he fought from a position of covenant. All right, he said, you uncircumcised Philistine. He told David, uncircumcised is a word used for covenant. Right, so in order for those people to be under the covenant of God, uh, the Jews, they had to circumcise. So circumcision is a sign of covenant. Today, we also have the new covenant, but our circumcision is a circumcision of the heart. We have been given a new heart, a new spirit, also cut. Right? God cut, also for operation. Huh? He cut off the old heart and he put in the new heart. Same like circumcision in the physical, circumcision to represent that the Jews are God's people. Okay? So today we have God cut into our heart. He gave us a new heart through Jesus Christ that we belong to God. Alright? So tithing is a covenant. And what we are saying is, God, I belong to you in the tithe. That's why we say the 10% belongs to God. And I, whole person, everything that I do and own and work and everything, all my money, everything belongs to you. And now you are my covenant God. You do to me according to your covenant, according to your promise, which is God say what? Test me. <laughs> I will and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and bless you. The windows, the hay there, and bless you. So okay, now the question. So what if we don't type? Oh. <laughs> okay. So, so what happened? Because today under grace. You, know, you have heard this message, okay, that God is a, a grace, right? He's merciful. So how? Do you, the, the, the thing that the Holy Spirit told me is, yes, God's grace is still there in Christ. So when believers don't tithe, they will still live under a grace of God, mercy of God, which is just barely get by. <laughs> okay, because if you don't sow, you don't reap. Okay, there's a principle of God, seek time and harvest. That's God's grace. He's still there. But if you are wise, what do you choose? You want to live under covenant or grace? No, you want both. <laughs> you want covenant and grace. Both is given to us. Why we only take one? And then live in that place of fear, fear like that. Okay? And then God be merciful. <laughs> you know, don't let me lose this job. Why? But if you go into tithing covenant, which is part of covenant, then you have both. The grace of God that can be so huge as well as, ha, huh, you promise one, huh, God. You can tell God you promise one. The other one, you can just say, please, la, God. <laughs> Gracious to me, la, help me la, to get by. Okay? But now you can have both. Right? If anything, you say, God, you promise, huh? That you bless me. I now already entrust my all my finances into your divine hand. So choose both covenant and grace. We want to have both. Amen. So that's why we type. See how powerful. So when I did I never I never studied this before actually, but when I saw this, wow, the letters. Okay, that's the DNA. We're going to finish soon. The spirit. Rock of God hath made me, and the breath of Almighty Al Shaddai. All right, El, God is El, Elohim, the most powerful, have given me life. So, this is wind, Ruach, God's spirit in the hay, and then you have uh, El Shaddai, means God Almighty. See the letter Shin? Almighty, He can destroy the devil, the works of the devil. All right, this is Aleph. 
and Lamet. So some letters we haven't learned yet. And this is life. Another word for Hebrew word for life. So we learned one is Kai the other day. Now we have Kaya. All right. So when God's life is in us, his DNA, the spirit, okay, the He, and then you have Almighty with all these letters, Shin. We have life. What is this letter? Huh? Head, new life, right? Uh, head. <laughs> and then this? Youth. God's divine hand, divine intervention in our life. You are no more normal anymore. You are spiritual. You have God's life inside you. And this one is? Hey, your eyes can open. You can see new life. Window or go into the new realm. We have the spirit of God. You have grace. <laughs> okay, the number numerical is five. Working in your life. Alright, so with God's spirit, what happened? Now, Romans 10, 9. Look at this. Huh? If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You all know this verse, right? Okay, so what happened when you, you asked Jesus to come into your life? Say, Lord, what did you all say? Lord Jesus, come into my life. Very simple. Be my Lord and Savior. And then, done already. <laughs> no need to say, forgive my sin or whatever, right? No need to say anything. Just that. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. If you acknowledge him as Lord, Okay, Master and Jesus, His name is done. Why? You're already saved. That means you already got new spirit, born again. How come? So simple one. Why? Because Jesus means in the word, ah, now you know already or not. Why you can be transformed in an instant? When you say Jesus, this is the power of the Hebrew letter of Jesus' name. His name is Jehovah is salvation. All right? And in, when you say Jesus, you're my Lord, you're saying Jehovah, Hamashiach is Messiah. And in these letters of the name of Jesus, Hebrew letters of Jesus is Yud, divine hand of God. So when you say, Lord Jesus, there's a divine hand of God operating. Remember, youth is so powerful. The little that holds the Lord, right? They created. And then you have a shin. Destroy sin. Sin need to be destroyed in our lives. Unbelief need to be destroyed, right? So when you say Jesus, in Hebrew, you are saying, yud, shin, vav, ayin. And these letters that has the power of God will immediately work in your spirit to bring forth the divine hand of God and destroy sin in your life, bring, connect you back to heaven and open your eyes to see the spiritual world. Okay, understand now? The first question I asked, how did you become born again? <laughs> in an instant, so simple, right? So if you believe in your heart and receive, confess with your mouth. Because the name of Jesus has all these letters. Even though we not understand, because we use the you know, different words in every translation, it doesn't matter. Okay? But if we understand, now we know why. So every of you know why, okay? <laughs> You're not sure? Everyone clear with you? Yeah, how come you can be safe one? <laughs> you ask, I just say, Lord Jesus, and then why am I safe? See? This is Messiah. Lah. Yud. Shin Ba Ain. Power in God's word, in the name of Jesus that brought you from darkness, from clutch of Satan's sin, demonic Adam's sin, sorry, and then brought you into life. So wonderful, right? Just by saying Jesus. So that's why some people may not have to say the whole thing. But in their heart, they believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And they, all they need to say one word, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah. And in Jesus, you have actually, plus yeah, just now, Yeshua, right? You also have God's DNA inside. So this is the 
letters or the DNA of Jesus Christ. So when we say Jesus as Lord, His DNA comes into you, which is all this for a start. Yud, Shin, Vav, Ayin. Those are the letters that now form your blueprint of your spiritual life. Now you can have divine power, might, authority because of the youth. Alright, you remember DNA? Oh, made of letters. Okay, so Jesus' DNA is now inside you. When you say, Jesus, my Lord, then Shin. Okay, you have the power to destroy the enemy already. No scared of the devil anymore. Then, and you have the fire of God as well. The passion, alright, for Jesus. The vow. Okay, that connect you to heaven already now. When you read the word of God, you can understand spiritual realm. Plus, Ayin, your spiritual eyes open. This is the DNA that will cause you to walk like that. <laughs> Live like that. Live in divine power. Live a divine supernatural life. Yes? See visions. <laughs> okay, Ruth. And live not afraid of devil anymore. Okay? And then you have another DNA inside you, spiritual part. You are connected to heaven. Okay? Connected to Jesus. And Ayin. Who? Ayin. What DNA? The DNA to see. Okay, why we have blue eyes and all that is a physical DNA, right? You can see your hair and all that. Your shape. Now, your hair, your shape, everything is Jesus one. <laughs> His life, His love. Everything is inside as the more we learn. You can see already. Can understand. Huh? Okay? And one more. Alright. Yahshua's name, Jesus, which is Yud, Shin, Vav, and Ayin, is actually very interesting. Written is on our hand. So let's put the hand like that. See the shape of Ayin here? Ayin here. You can now see. And then you have the Yud. Right. Uh, sorry, this is Shin, this is Ayin, this is Yud, and this is the Vav. Right? The right palm out and centered overhead. Our affirmation and power of Yeshua's name. Raise your praise. Right? Jehovah has given me the shield of salvation. And our right hand held up. Hold up your hand. Your care has made me great. And we will see always Jesus there. Yeshua there. It's already written. In our head. Actually, in our heart also. I didn't give you the picture. Shin is God's signature. Alright? And it's everywhere in the human, even in, written in our human body. So, Yud He, Vav He is inside us. All the DNA from the Hebrew letters, the power. And this is quite cute, right? I just saw this. <laughs> so I had a DNA test, spiritual one done. And Venice, who is your father? <laughs> so we all did a DNA test, right? Romans 8. Okay, and what we went through today. Who is your father? God. All right, Romans uh, 8, 14 also tells us that we have been born just now, First Peter 2, 23, right? We have been born of incorruptible seed, which is from? God. So who is your father? Spiritual father, Elisha? Yeah, Jehovah, Yud, He, Vav, He, the creator of this universe, and Yahshua, Jesus Christ. All right, made it possible. So whose DNA do we have inside you? God's. And what are the DNA? In the letters. In the letters. All right, that's going to form your life now. Okay, you're not going to have dominion. You're going to trust him. You're going to, all right, but from his word, the letters of his word, okay? So even the Aaron, Aaronic blessing, right, that God tell his people is live long and prosper. That's God's will for us to live long and weak <laughs> and suffer. No, live long and prosper. And you can see the, that's what the uh, priests do, all right? The letter Shin, they will do the form of the letter Shin, okay, to bless the people. And they say El Shaddai, all right? Stands for, Shin stands for Shaddai, it's the first letter of Shaddai, right? Almighty God, 
Yeah, and they say Shaddai is the Hebrew name for Lord. The temple priests would hold out their hands in a position to give the benediction. May the Lord bless you, keep you, right? And, and uh, let his face shine upon you. So I put it here bigger so you can see. And this is so powerful. This was one revelation that I received. Whenever the Lord said to Moses, whenever you do this, bless the people, he said, I myself will bless them. Right? Because he is in those words. And actually, there is a study of these words also. How many gematria and all the meaning there. So when we speak out this word to bless people or on our own self, we are releasing supernatural power energy into our body, into our life to be what? To be blessed, right? to be shining, right? be receiving His grace, right? His countenance, His all this got meaning. Right? And we will have shalom, peace. So for us, it's peace. But we haven't studied yet. So that's why I said, until Jesus comes, we will be studying. <laughs> because it's so exciting. Shalom. What is inside that? What are the letters inside? So when they say, go in peace, or peace be unto you. Right? If you say shalom without understanding the letters, you may not really get the full meaning. But when we study and find the letters, no wonder when they say the Hebrew letters of God, when they say all these things in Hebrew, I'm not sure able to do all that. <laughs> okay? But, but it, also, it can also be as effective all right, in English or Chinese. Right? As long as we have a revelation of an understanding. But knowing the Hebrew letters help us to realize how powerful when we speak God's word over the lives of people or our own life. You understand? So why we need to speak God's word, why we need to act on God's word, why God's word and nothing other word, God's word is so important. And you see, it is a DNA of, of your new born again spirit of God inside you. And it works, the power that comes out from it that created this whole universe is inside you. As you speak God's word, it comes out. It begins to manifest because every letter has power yeah every letter hebrew letter that forms words is so powerful so as we go along we will look into words like healing what is inside there you know prosperity we learn a little bit about type today right because it's a very important part of life right finances why we need to know because god wants to take us to away the worry of finances right and trust him and his way of prospering right and then more and more so exciting are you excited <laughs> yeah to to know our god so just some more when you know that time is getting shorter and shorter right all right today we have our scientist uh, elijah uh, this morning tell me about the science uh, discovering that how many seconds is already lost uh, what uh, in in the world today by science uh, are going faster the world which is a word in the bible where god said in the last days the last days will be shortened. Yeah, and it's, now it's happening. Okay, so you want to know the signs, you can ask him, right? But the spiritual part is that it is just according to what God's word say. In Daniel prophesied already in the last days. So even we don't know signs, we also know that days are passing very fast. Right? Not normal. Right? Very fast night already. Okay, because there's something happening. And why, why is it happening? According to God's word. God already said so. When the last days come, the days will be shortened. So the scientists only now getting the <laughs> scientific fact, but the Bible already tell. That's how powerful. And it's actually happening according to God's word. So what, what are we living in? The last days. <laughs> These are some of the signs that we are living in the last days. And in the last days, why Holy Spirit suddenly give us this to go into the Hebrew letters so that we don't live a life blur blur like that <laughs> on this earth right just into the physical realm and we will stand out as the church because the the word of god for the church is that his body the church will be glorious in ephesians chapter 5 or 6 right he will come and jesus will come and return to a glorious church so what is glorious shining bright prosperous happy that's the glorious church and that's all of you. You will all be blessed if you understand and follow 
God's ways. Yeah? So that we will rise up today and the world who is in darkness will come and say, Evelyn, I want to know what you, why you're so prosperous, why you're so happy. Right? Each one of you, right? even Elisha, Venice, and all of you, people, the world, the dark one will attract to the light. Right? When you are in the dark, you see light, you want to go to the light. And we are the light of this world. So the light is the glory of God. What is glory? Prosperity, blessing, all that is ours. But for what purpose? To reach out to the lost, the world. They come to you. They will, now we go, still go out and reach to them. Right? But he's also coming. We are in the last days. Right? So as we learn the power of God, who our God is, we will learn to rule and reign in life. And how powerful are those instructions of God, those letters of God. Amen? Hallelujah.